Hello and welcome again. Uh, we started talking about the number theory uh, concepts that we need to uh, for asymmetric cryptography. Now, the next concept we need to talk about is the gradius uh, common divisor, or uh, in short, uh, GCD. Now, we will need this later to define some other concepts. Now, I'm sure you have seen uh, this before, but let's, just to recall this, uh, let's, re let's remember what the definition of the greatest common divisor is. Now, the greatest common divisor is applied to two integers. So we have two integers, A and B, and none of both of them equal to zero. That means A and B both cannot be zero. Now, one of them could be, but the other one cannot be zero. Now, the reason for that is because uh, if you allowed both of them to be zero, then the GCD will not be defined. Now, we won't go into those technicalities, but just for your information, then A and B are integers, not both of them zero. Now, the GCD, as the name indicates, uh, we're gonna, uh, it's going to be the greatest common divisor, of course, and I'm going to indicate it with this notation. So GCD, parenthesis AB, whenever you see this notation, means the greatest common divisor of two integers. So it's, it's kind of like an operation that acts on two, two integers. So by definition, it's the largest positive divisor of both numbers, of both numbers A and B. So it's the largest integer that, that divides exactly with no remainder the numbers A and B. Now, if we want to give actually a formal definition what the greatest common divisor is, if I call D the greatest common divisor of two integers, again, none of, not, none, none both of them equal to zero, that number D has to satisfy three properties. The first property is that it has to be a positive number. So we're always going to get a positive number out of the greatest common divisor. It has to divide uh, both of them. And remember, this notation of the vertical bar means D divides A, and also D has to divide B. Now, that's not enough because that has to be the largest divisor. Now, the third condition here is what assures that you have the largest divisor. And what it says is the following. If D prime is some other integer divides A and D prime also divides B, then D, by definition, because it's the largest, then D has to be bigger than or equal to D prime. That is, the last part here is saying that it's the largest divisor. This is actually one, two, and three. It's just a formal definition of the greatest common divisor. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, compute the greatest common divisor. And to do that, uh, we're gonna use one property. And this property that is right here, the property is if you have the greatest common divisor between two integers, that's going to give you exactly the same as the greatest common divisor between the absolute values of the integers. Now, the reason we want to do this or use this property is because I don't want to worry about positive and negative. So every time I compute GCD, it's going to be GCD of two positive integers. Uh, and the reason that is general, because if you have, for example, the greatest common divisor between negative 20 and let's say negative 40, that's exactly the same as the GCD between 20 and 40. So the GCD uh, it remains unchanged if you uh, take the absolute value of the integers here. So we're going to concern about the GCD of non-negative numbers. So that's the only reason I put down this property. So now to compute the GCD, which is uh, something that we want to do, uh, and we wanna, if we want to do it for the small numbers, then... What we want to do in that case, if it is a small number, that can be done doing the factorization of the numbers. The, the uh, theorem that we saw last time, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, it says that we can do that for all the integers. Now, computing the factorization is not usually an easy thing, but for the small numbers, that is uh, usually very fast to do. So we're going to use the, uh, the factorization of the integers to compute the uh, greatest common divisor of two integers. So, so how are we going to do that? So... Let me write down the example here. So the example is, let's try to find the greatest common divisor between 120 and 84. What you want to do is, you want to take both numbers and you're going to find the factorization into prime numbers of both of those numbers. So here I have 120, which is a 2 cubed times 3 times 5. So is this is the canonical factorization into prime numbers of 120. In a similar way, you can also do 84. So 84 uh, is 2 squared times 3 times 7. 
So again, a factorization into prime numbers. Now, once you have this factorization, one of the properties of the GCD is if you have this factorization, the GCD will be the common primes to the smallest exponents. So what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is the following thing. So the common primes with the lowest exponents. So I already have my factorization here. So I'm going to look at the discomposition of those numbers as product of primes. And I'm going to look at what primes are common. So for example, here 2 is common for both. So I'm going to write down my 2 here as an answer for the GCD. I also have 3 is common in both. So I'm going to write down 3. So it's going to be times 3. Nothing else is common here. Uh, 5, as you can see, is in this factorization, but it's not in 84. And the other way around, also 7 is in the factorization of 84, but it's not in the 120. So I don't need to put these two primes, 5 and 7. You only put the ones that are common to both. Now, now I have to take care of the exponents. Now, for 2, the smallest exponent that I see here appearing in both factorization is a 2. So I have a 2 squared here. Now, for 3, the smallest exponent is, is 3 to the first, because if you look at here what 3 is, is 3 is the same as 3 to the first power, similar for this one, so it's going to be 3 only here. So what is the greatest common factor? This is 2 squared times 3, which is actually 12. So it's 4 times 3. So that's how you compute the greatest common divisor. Now, this is a good way to compute it, provided that the numbers that you are dealing with are the small numbers. Now, if the numbers are large, factorization is usually not something that you want to do because factorization is usually a hard problem. Even though you have been doing this for small numbers, doing this for large numbers really becomes a big problem. So that's what I want to mention now. So for large numbers, as it says here, this technique is not feasible. So it's not doable because what I mentioned already is factorization Factoring a large integer is usually a difficult problem. And by difficult, I mean it's going to take a very long time. So it's not feasible to do it. Now, how big of numbers are we talking about here? Now, if it is for a human being, of course, it's going to take us longer. But for computers also, there will be numbers that are actually too big uh, to factor, even though we have a lot of power today in computing. Uh, even though we have that, then it's not still possible to come actually factor uh, big integers. So what I want to show you is just an example. And this example is just to show you that factorization is actually a hard problem, a difficult problem, in the sense that it's going to take, uh, for large numbers, it takes usually a very long time. So let's look at this number. Let's try to factor 100 factorial minus 1. Now, what is this 100 factorial here? If you haven't seen this notation here, you see I have a 1,000. Sorry, this is a 1,000. This is a 1,000 here. And this exclamation point is just a notation. And this notation actually means that I'm going to take all the numbers from 1 through 1,000 and I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to get a big number because it's going to, this number that is right here is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to 1,000. Then I subtract 1. So I'm going to get a huge number anyways here. Now this is going to take a very long time to factor. And what I mean by that, of course, this is going to be, for a human being, it's going to take a long, factor, long time to factor. But it's also going to take a long time to factor for a computer. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you a software that is specialized in number theory, in particular in elemental number theory. It has optimized algorithms and powerful algorithms to factor integers. Even though that software is optimized it will take a very long time to factor an integer because factoring is a hard problem for large numbers. The, num the name of that is uh, GPPARI. It's a P-A-R-I. I think I, maybe this is a French uh, word, I believe. Now, it's a software that is specialized and it has very fast algorithms, optimized algorithms for factorization. So the only reason I'm going to show you that software it's not because I want you to learn that software. It's because I wanted to show you that even with the best tools, uh, factoring this number takes a very long time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to the software and I'm going to show you how uh, long it takes for that software to factor this number here that we have here in the screen. So I will show you that in the software that I uh, call Perry. 
So I'm here in the specialized software that I was mentioning in the video. Uh, and uh, this software is actually optimized for doing computations in number theory. It is one of the best softwares out there. Maybe you haven't heard of it, but it's really uh, optimized for number theory in other parts of uh, number theory, algebraic number theory, and other things that, of course, we wouldn't see in the class. Now, I don't expect you to uh, know any of this. This is just an example to show you that actually factorization is a very hard problem, and it takes a long time to compute. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, clear the screen here, and I'm going to show you the number that I was talking about in the video. So the number I was talking about in the video is uh, 1,000 factorial minus 1. So 1,000 factorial minus 1. Now, that number is a very huge number because what it means there is I have a 1,000 factorial. So I multiply all the numbers from 1 through 1,000. I get a big number, and I subtract 1. So I'm going to get a very huge number. As you can see here, I'm going to press Enter, and it's going to actually fill out the screen. So that's the number that you see there. So it's a huge uh, integer. As you can see, this, uh, this uh, uh, calculator petty can do computations in a very fast way. So that's a very long number there. All right, so the point here is that uh, I'm going to factor that. I'm going to try to factor that number with the specialized and optimized uh, algorithms that are implemented here in Perry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say factor. OK, I'm going to clear this clean first because now that number is too big. I don't want to uh, uh, look at it anymore. But I can refer to the number by the percentage 1. As you can see there, there's a percentage 1 uh, that uh, puts in memory uh, that number. So whenever I say percentage one, it means that number. So I'm going to clear the screen again. I'll just show you that the number is actually quite big. So I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to say factor. That's the uh, name of the function to factor. So I'm going to say factor uh, percentage one. And it's going to refer to the number that you saw on the screen, which is very big. Now, once I press enter, uh, the software, which is again optimized for number theory, is going to try to factor that uh, integer, which is extremely big. Now, take a look at the time there. So the time right now is 3.04 PM. Now, I'm going to press Enter here. And as you can see there, uh, now that I have a cursor there, which is blinking, that means is uh, the software is attempting to factor the uh, integer. Again, take a look at the time there. And so I'll come back later uh, to show you that even after a very long time, and even though the software is specialized, the software won't be able to give me a sensible answer. So I'm going to stop the video now because I, I don't want to wait here for hours. And so I'm going to stop it now and I'm going to show you when I come back a different time and we will see that the software is actually still trying to compute the factorization. Uh, hello, I'm back here and as you can see it has been uh, over an hour there. The time now is 4.09 p.m. Uh, the software is still running, and it hasn't uh, found the answer yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to stop the software because um, this is going to probably take more than one hour. Now, the whole point of this uh, part of the video is to show you that factory section is, in fact, a hard problem if you have large numbers. And that's basically one of the main uh, things in cryptography. The security, many... Uh, security in cryptography or the security of the systems are usually based on the fact that it is difficult to factor integers. Now, if you could find an algorithm which is fast and it could factor integers, you could break a lot of the systems that are in use today. So integer factorization is a big problem in cryptography. Not only is what is based on the security, breaking a security uh, of that, if you have a powerful algorithm for factoring integer, could you you could in fact break it. So so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video, uh, this part of the video at least here, uh, and show you where it goes after this.